Hello everyone, this is Steve. I've recorded a number of videos talking about my horse bet tracking spreadsheet for MSXL, which you can find on my channel. But today I would like to begin a new series of videos talking about what to think about when betting the races. Now today I'm not going to talk about how to handicap the races. You can find plenty of resources on that elsewhere, and there are many other people more knowledgeable than me about that aspect of the game. But handicapping the races is only half the battle. Over the years, I've met many very good handicappers who nevertheless consistently lose, and often badly, because they put all of their attention on what to bet, and little or no attention on how to bet. And this is backwards. We have no control over what will happen in a race, but we have total control over how we bet a race. We should therefore do everything possible to maximize our potential for winning through how we wager. Nothing we do will pay greater dividends. With that, I would like to talk briefly about my own personal four commandments for betting on horse races. Commandment number one, never lose sight of your return on investment. Your ROI determines whether you are a winning or a losing horse player, nothing else. How often you cash tickets does not matter. How often you are correct about races without cashing does not matter. Your ROI is the only measure of how well you are doing, and every single wager should be made with only one thought in mind. Will this wager offer a sufficient return on my investment? Bear in mind that no one is always correct about how a race will be run. In fact, most of us are usually wrong. I could probably say, almost all of us are almost always wrong. You can still win money betting so long as you're adequately compensated for your risk. But for that to happen, you must ask yourself two things. How likely is it that what I am betting will occur? And how much money can I expect to receive if I'm correct? Every single bet you make must adequately compensate you for your risk. This is a game of probabilities. Nothing in horse racing is 100% likely to occur. Therefore, the expected payout on any bet must be offset by the likelihood that you will lose. If any individual bet could not be expected to return a positive ROI over the long run, then it should not be made, even if, in any particular race, you would have cashed a ticket. A roulette wheel sometimes lands on double zero, and yet betting on double zero or any other number on a roulette wheel is not a good bet, even when the ball lands on double zero. Over the long run, you will lose. So it goes in horse racing as well. Commandment number two, formulate an opinion. Every weekend I see people with no clear opinion about a race nevertheless risking money on that race. And this is a serious problem. You must be rigorous. What specifically do you believe will happen in this race? Your opinion should be stated in terms of probability. I think that this horse will win is not a clear enough opinion to be successful because this is a game of odds. A horse that will probably win still may not be a good bet even if you are completely correct. Let's say that horse is one to two, for example. That horse must win at least two thirds of the time for you just to break even. Your opinion must therefore be spe specific enough for you to determine whether your bet will win or lose money over the long term. I think this horse will win is not sufficiently precise to accomplish that. This lesson is obvious enough in the easy cases, like win betting, but becomes harder for more, most horse players outside of that context. For example, many players will bet all of their selections to win and to place, or to win, place, and show. These may or may not be good bets in any particular case, but rarely in my experience do players ask themselves whether each of those bets, taken in isolation, is likely to compensate for the risk. If your opinion is that a horse is more likely to win a race than it is being bet, it does not automatically follow that the race is more likely to the horse is more likely to place than the betting suggests. You must form a separate opinion. The same can be said for exotic wagers. Horses are often added thoughtlessly to exactas and trifectas, less due to the strength of the player's opinion and more due to the player's desire to cash a ticket. This is sometimes successful in the short term, but usually disastrous in the long term. That said, the beauty of horse racing is that it is possible to form opinions outside the context of specific horses. Do you believe that a race is likely to melt down due to a fast pace? You can assign a probability to that prediction. 
And if you can assign a probability to that prediction, you can likely find a wager to accommodate that opinion. There are many other examples I could give, and no doubt you could come up with others as well. But do not go looking for bets to make until you have focused in your mind upon a definite opinion. Commandment number three, bet your opinion, not around your opinion. I see this every day as well. A person likes a certain horse to win. They believe they can earn even more money with an exacta or trifecta, and so they will use that horse on top of several others. But they do not want to miss out if their horse runs second or third, so they'll include their horse beneath as well. Or perhaps they'll box several horses together with their horse that they really like among that group. These players are betting near their opinion, but very little on their opinion. Here's a common example. A person likes a particular horse in a race and wants to augment their score through an exotic wager. Perhaps they decide to play an exactum. The person likes a particular horse, let's say the one horse, but also believes that the two and the three, which are the likely favorites, are dangerous in this race. And so the person uses the one, two, and three on top. Now the person goes looking for horses to use underneath. The person believes that the four and the five are long shots with a good chance to hit the board, but the two and the three remain dangerous, and so they are included underneath as well. And the player does not want to miss out if the one horse comes in second, and so that horse is included below as well. Now the person is playing 12 separate wagers, 1, 2, 3 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, when his strong opinion only applies to the one horse. There are two problems here. First, the math is prohibitive. Even a solid exacta, let's say $120 back for a $2 bet, will only return 4 to 1 odds on the overall bet of $24 across 12 combinations at $2 each. And many of the combinations will pay less than that $120. And, of course, the bet may not cash at all. Among the 12 bets, many are likely losing combinations over the long term. Second, suppose the player's opinion was completely correct, and the one horse was far more likely to win than his odds, and in fact does win. But our player has not taken full advantage of his success. Instead, he has squandered most of his bet on combinations for which he has no strong opinion out of, out of a desire to cash a ticket player has now forfeited an opportunity to seriously pad his bankroll, whether by betting $30 to win on the one horse, or through more focused exactus keying that opinion about the one horse, and only that opinion. The $120 exacta at $2 would have paid $620 for $10, with the only thing being lost is combinations of bets that the player did not have adequately formed opinions about. This is especially dangerous because most successful players, not all, but most, will find that their success comes not through steady race after race accumulation, but through lump scores. Now I will offer an example from my own bet tracking, not because I am an outstanding horse player, but because it is representative. You can see at the top a string of losing bets, and if I scrolled up you would see many more. But then at the bottom, you see two payouts more than exceeding those losses. Those payouts were keyed to a single horse for which I had a very strong opinion, and on that occasion I was correct. My one good opinion offset at least a dozen bad ones, but only because I did not drown my good opinion with several weaker opinions hoping to get something, anything, from the race. There is no worse feeling than being completely correct about a race, seeing that opinion play out, and not getting an adequate adequate return entirely because you did not have the fortitude to bet that opinion. Do not let that happen to you. And finally, commandment number four, be comfortable not cashing. My example above was a success, but it would have been a good bet even if I had not cashed. The horse was 14 to one and f was far more likely to win than the 7% odds that those win odds implied. I personally estimated that horse had about a 25% chance of winning a substantial edge over the odds, but still a bet that, more times than not, will pay nothing. My strongest bet last weekend was a horse that went off at odds of 21 to 1 and finished third by a little over a length. I did not get back so much as a cent, but it was still a very good bet, and if I continue making that bet, I will make money. The math again is simple. Our edge often increases as likelihood decreases. In fact, we cannot have much of an edge when the payoff is low. Suppose a horse is even money with absolutely zero chance of losing, which of course is never true. This horse would be a very good bet. 
over the long term, we would double our money as we would get precisely double twice our money back from every race. For every $200 bet to win, let's say across 100 races, we would get $200. Our edge is 100%. Now let's take a different race with a horse at 20 to 1 odds, but a 20% chance of winning. Across 100 races at $2 bet to win, we would expect to receive an additional $800, four times as much as our even money horse that never loses. Our 20 to 1 shot is where we offset our many bad opinions. But even where, where we are correct about our long shots chances, that horse will lose four times for each race that it wins. We must be comfortable with that, because if we are not, we will miss out on the payoff when it comes, and that payoff will come frequently enough to make the bet worthwhile. That is not to say that you should go blindly betting long shots. You must be honest with yourself, both before the race and after, about your likelihood of success. Remember, though, that you cannot measure your success by single races. There's too much variation, too much room for chance. Do not respond to every losing bet by asking yourself what you could have done to turn that bet into a winning one. The bet you lost may very well have been a better one than the bet that would have paid. That is all I have for you today. I found that tracking my bets has been vital in instilling these personal commandments to me, and I encourage you to track your own bets each and every day, each and every race. Elsewhere on my YouTube channel, you can find videos showing how my horse bet tracking spreadsheet works, along with tools I've developed as part of that spreadsheet. If you would like a copy of the spreadsheet, email me at horsebettracker at gmail.com and I'll send you a copy. The spreadsheet's completely free. Uh, all you have to do is email me and I'll gladly send you a copy. Once again, that's at horsebettracker at gmail.com. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel for more content about betting that's going to be coming out over the, com over the coming months, along with videos about new features of the spreadsheet as they become available. Thank you.